So, you see this calf? It's not a Adidas calf. It's a Genev scarf. And who is Genev? What is Genev? What's it all about? No, I'm not telling you anything. We have the founder of Genev, Jennifer Georges here with me in my Zoom room today. And Jennifer will take you through her entire journey. So why fashion? How fashion? What did she do when she was in the fashion school? And once she graduated, what is she doing now? So Jen would take you through all of this. So come along, let's join Jennifer Georges. So Jennifer, it's wonderful to have you here this morning and I've been getting lots of questions. Um, you know, so many aspiring fashion designers want to learn from you. So I'd actually let you do the talking and um, introduce yourself and Genev to my audience. And so over to you, Jen. So you do the talking now. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Intre. That was really nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so, Genev is basically a, a women's high, mid to high end women's label, which is all about um, empowering the woman through clothing and accessories. So, wearing things that uh, make you feel strong and confident and um, help you, you know, face the day and face the world. Yeah. So, that's basically basically what I'm uh, working on at the moment. <laughs> Wonderful. So first things first, Jennifer, why did you do fashion design? Why not banking or IT or real estate? You know, they're supposed to be, they, you could have made a lot of money, but uh, why fashion design? It's a little uh, this way, that way, isn't it? I mean, um, it's a little uncertain. It's high pressure. Uh, it's a lot of work. So why did you, did you know all about that? And <laughs> you knew or didn't know? And why was, why is fashion your passion? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I always feel so lame when I say that, but it's, that's what, what it is. It's your yeah. passion. Yeah. Um, so essentially, it's funny you said banking first, because I actually, when I came out of high school, I started a bachelor's degree in commerce at um, Melbourne Uni. So I went, I actually did the first semester um, commerce at Melbourne. It was so different, obviously, to what I'm doing now. But back then, I just obviously having a bit more of a cultural background um, and traditional background, I'm Middle Eastern. And your family always pushes you to do your best, do your best and like be the best, which is great. But um, I never felt myself to be drawn to those traditional um, careers. Um, even though I did all of those subjects in high school, like the maths and sciences and everything. But in year 12, I really pushed to have textiles as my one of my subjects. So um, my one of my final BC subjects. And I finished at like the top of my class which was really awesome. I was so into it, but then I still did not think of it as a career. I still thought I have to get into something more mathematical or science-based or so. I got into like the best degree, which I was able to get into, which was like Bachelor of Commerce at Melbourne. So I went, I did a semester, but the whole time I was there, I just felt like it, I did not belong there. And I just kept thinking about fashion and like, I was thinking, okay, what if I actually were to pursue this? Like, how would it, how would that look? And like, what would I do? Um, so I spoke to a few, like my mom, some family, some of my close friends and was like, I'm serious. It's like, I can't stop thinking about it. When I'm in class, in economics class, I'm thinking about what the teacher is wearing. Like, I'm not thinking about economics. <laughs> like, I was just <laughs> analyzing the clothes. Um, so, yeah, essentially, I decided to defer um, the rest of the year. And I decided I'm going to take that time to really do some research into, like, what, what it would mean to pursue fashion. So I did, um, I went to a bunch of like 
uh, uni um, open days for fashion courses and things like that. And I um, did a short course um, in at RMIT. It was like a fashion design folio preparation short course, um, which Mark Reed was my teacher in the short course, which is really funny because he ended up being my teacher at uni as well. Um, yeah, and then I just, yeah, had some serious chats with my mum and decided, um, no, I'm going to really give this a go because I really see myself like putting my all into it and, you know, really working for it. And I just loved it. So I was like, why not? You know? So, so you have pretty much answered what I was about to ask you next, that how did you research and how did you shortlist the institutions so uh, you went to open days you learned about all of these institutions and finally you decided to apply to a few places am i right yeah yeah exactly i um i did some of my own research i went they had there were a few different open nights mm -hmm. um that i found for different um fashion courses at different um places so like all of the there's quite a few in melbourne so mm -hmm. Um, I went to a few, I applied for the next year um, mm -hmm. entry to um, a bunch, like, I think all of the ones that I could find pretty much. The only one that I didn't apply for was White House because I didn't know about White House. Okay. For some reason, I, or no, I think it was that White House at that stage didn't offer a fee help sort of program. Okay. okay. At, um, so I thought, yeah, okay, I can't pay um, upright. So I definitely needed some sort of hex for your help um, program. So I applied to all the other degrees that I could find and went to the interviews and yeah, went from there. Yeah, so I'd explain here, I have a global audience. So those of you who are outside of Australia, so the government um, supports students, you can take out student uh, loans and student allowances. There are criteria. So when Jennifer is talking about hex and fee help, she's referring to all of that. Jen, all good, but how did you prepare? Like uh, many of um, the wannabe, the aspiring uh, designers are now preparing for their interviews and portfolio presentations, etc. I did a couple of videos um, on these two topics, but they'd probably want to learn from you firsthand. How did you prepare for the interviews? What did you take? You know, how did you build up your portfolio that you presented to your interviewers? So a little bit of insight into that. Yeah. Um, so uh, essentially, in year twelve, um, I did the textiles uh, as my one of my final VC subjects, and in that subject, you prepare a massive like folio, but that is. Um, catered to the, the subject that you do in year 12. So that folio that I prepared, although it was really good and the garment that I did was, was really extravagant and like awesome, it showed, showcased some of my skills, but um, that folio was quite different to what I needed to show at an interview. So, and I honestly, at that stage when I was applying, I didn't know. So that's why I researched some of those short courses and RMIT was offering, um, quite like a few different really good short courses um, which are only like six or eight weeks or something and one day a week um, and one of the courses was uh, fashion design and folio preparation yeah. so it's like folio preparation preparing you to apply um, there was another one which was like fashion drawing and I was tossing between the two but I decided to do the folio prep because I was like oh I'm essentially doing this to prepare to get in and also to see if I will like the course so it, it gave me a taste of what the course would be like and um, also helped me cater my portfolio and application to the course so that was really helpful so I essentially used my year 12 folio but I took out only the essential parts that I needed. And I was also in that time doing like a lot of my own experimentation with clothes. Like I had this like leather jacket that I like cut up and was adding studs to. I don't know, I was just doing things for, for fun and just to like show my creativity and just doing my own sketches and designs. And um, I'd show them to my teacher at that fashion prep class. Um, 
portfolio prep class and he gave me some help and advice and that's essentially how I um, created my folio for the application. Yeah. Wonderful. So what I like is uh, to summarize, you took a little course on portfolio presentation yeah. and you also made a very significant point here that you did not include everything or you only included what you considered were the highlights of, of what you've been doing in year 12 and some of your experimentation thereafter. Yeah. So was your portfolio just a folder, like a 2D, two-dimensional thing? Or did you also, do you remember if you took a couple of garments or uh, yeah. how did you do it? I did. I did take garments. I had like a little, <laughs> I remember because I had like a little travel suitcase <laughs> um, because a lot of them were like in the city and I live really far out and I had to take the train and stuff. So I put everything in like a little travel suitcase that I had. Um, and I did put, I put a few garments in there and my my big sort of because the portfolio is like a three a three size yeah, so I put yeah. that all in there and like some sketches but yeah definitely you need to take out like I only brought my um you know really big garments that were I needed to show I didn't bring like random little things and in the portfolio was only um really essential things that needed to be in there what um you especially in year 12, your folio has a lot of stuff that's not needed at all. And when you start your fashion course, you'll realize why it's like probably not needed to show them because a lot of that stuff, just like your best sketches, your best ideas, your best um, things that showcase who you are as a person, as a designer, I think is the most important. Yeah. True. And if, yeah, because we've had, I've probably gone through several hundred portfolios in my, yeah. you know, in my career as an academic. And we literally, with some of the portfolios, we literally doze off, you know, there's so oh, yeah. much content, yeah. yeah, which is not required. Hmm. But tell me, Jennifer, any highlights of the interview, any tips that you'd like to give, give to our potential fashion designers? Yes, I have. A, so I have a big sort of thing that was at the time, it really um, bothered me and upset me because I, um, so my top, one of my top choices of colleges was um, RMIT. Yeah. Because everyone, you know, talks yep. about how great it is and everything. Um, and so my, the application process to get in at the time, I don't know if it's still the same, but at the time was you had to do a test and um if you part if um if you get through the tests like if they like what they see in the tests that you do um they call you in for an interview and then you have a one-on-one -on -one, uh well it wasn't one-on-one -on -one, it was like two teachers and this and the applicant so it was like two um fashion teachers and been getting an interview so i um got through the test stage so i got an interview and then i went into the interview and um, I remember there was one question that really, really stumped me. Um, and I knew as soon as I like couldn't answer that question, I was like, oh no, no way I'm gonna get in there. So they asked me, there were two teachers and they were kind of playing like good cop, bad cop. I felt like one was very, very nice and mm -hmm. the other one was very, very stern and um, not as open. Um, and everything was going okay until they asked me, what is the biggest um, influence in fashion in fashion like what what in the world kind of um shapes fashion and fashion design trends and things like that mm -hmm. and i just like at this at that time i didn't really know much like i just i you know that's the sort of thing that i'm going to school to learn like i didn't i was really stumped i didn't know how to answer it Mm. And obviously to me, it was like creating like beautiful things and um, mm. everything like that. But le what I later learned was that it was in first year, which was K Katrina really like drilled this into our heads, was that it's the social, economic, um, political and cultural yeah. um, trends. So yeah. that is the biggest thing that influence, influences fashion design. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. So that was one of my biggest sort of learnings in the whole interview process. Um, but I was also kind of glad that I didn't get into RMIT because I really, really enjoyed my time at um, Academy of Design. Yeah. And I think it all worked how it was meant to be in the end, which was mm -hmm. um, kind of perfect. Yeah. Yeah. At times things just work out, you know, and we enjoyed having you with us. And um, uh, yes, uh, so probably you've given me an idea because I'd probably talk about how you can put a put a fashion collection like a put a fashion collection together and what are the factors that influence you so one of them would be the trends and the pest factor that you referred to right now um, so um, yeah that might be the topic for my next video Jennifer Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, at that point, at uh, just an entry level interview, you, you do not know so much about trends. Yeah. But nonetheless, um, you got into the Academy of Design, um, which was a beautiful institution. And yeah. it was, um, you know, we were such a, I think we were all, it's a very close knit kind of a group, you know, and we worked together with the students. But anyway, that's um, what I, I loved that aspect of it, honestly. I think I, that's where I might have struggled if I was to go to RMIT because there's a lot more like the club yeah. and then they're not as catered to each student. But at Academy of Design, it was really like you, you could really, I could come to you whenever I needed. Yeah. I could ask all the teachers anything at any time there. Everyone was so helpful. It was like a little family sort of thing. It yes. was very, um, very nice. Like everyone was always connected and yeah, I, I really liked that um, atmosphere. Okay. Uh, so, a big change happens, you know, when it comes to uh, making that transition from uh, year 12 into, say, a bachelor's degree course. Suddenly, from you, you in, when you are at school, you are micromanaged. So, you know, the teachers are asking you to do homework, your assignments. And when you get into a tertiary institution, you are pretty much uh, asked to self-manage. You know, we do not micromanage the students at, at a tertiary institution. You are supposed to be um, doing your own things. You should be able to time manage. So how did you cope with that big change? I know some students like, you know, they have they absolutely let go you know, yeah. once they get into tertiary institutions yeah. and then when the assignments hit you like all five assignments together yeah. then you know it, it's a moment of reckoning that how do I do this so Jen tell me how did you manage your time and how did you work around I know you were doing a major a sub major some different uh, about five different subjects or something yeah. like that, if I remember correctly. So how did you manage your time and how did you work autonomously, you know, uh, once you were in a tertiary institution? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, honestly, this is something um, that is always, uh, I always have to come back to and reassess because um, even in life, time management is one of the, the biggest yeah. sort of skills that you need. Um, yeah, first year was quite difficult because you're transitioning into um, that, just like uh, trying to manage all the different things all at once. I think first year, I definitely felt that everything hit me at once towards the end because you obviously don't, you underestimate how much you need to do from the beginning. Um, but as I got, you know, into second and third year, I really um, started to think ahead. So like even before, you know, the first day that they give us, because in the design courses, we generally get like all, our big assignment at the beginning, like the first week of the semester, you'll, you'll know what you need to do for the entire <laughs> semester, especially for the fashion course. Like if you need to create a uh, capsule collection or something like that, you'll know from the beginning of the class so you can sort of start beginning to plan um, what you want to do, like what kind of pieces, what kind of like theme, you know. So I, I taught third year, I was always trying to think ahead and um, plan 
how I wanted things to go from the beginning, especially with the fashion um, classes, because that's one of the biggest sort of things that you really, really needed to manage your time, mm. especially when you're making uh, like five to seven pieces or whatever. The final year, you definitely, um, when you're creating your little collection uh, last in the last year, you need to um, know what you want and make those quick decisions. Um, be decisive. That's another thing. Like be decisive. Don't ponder too much. Just like um, try and know what you want. Make that decision so you can plan out your, your time and not freak out right at the end, which is always going to happen. But at least the, the more you do, the better you make it for yourself, obviously. That's what happens, you know, people yeah. who do not plan, they do not time manage and they leave it till the end. Then I used to get those uh, you know, the messages coming to me late at night, Samita, how do I write the business plan that I'm supposed to uh, submit tomorrow? That's the deadline. Yeah. Now, even if you work through the night, you cannot come up with a business plan yeah. you know, overnight or fashion garments, like, like mm -hmm. collections. Um, one thorny or curly question is, how did you cope with the team projects. I mean, I, I have been an ombudsman to some serious conflicts, you know, within a team project several, several times. So I know team projects were part of your curriculum. So how did you handle, how did you cope with, and how did you work with your, you know, your colleagues and classmates? Yeah. Um, uh, honestly, like I, I feel like I was quite blessed in my in my course um I had quite a like we had a group of friends who were very um very tight-knit um especially by the at the end of the degree I we had made um such close friends in the class and um we felt like we could kind of tell each other anything especially um even the whole class was all friends with each other so um there wasn't too rigid in like when you wanted to share your ideas or, you know, speak. And we had a lot of oral presentations, which helped, I, I think, open everyone up and everyone was able to sh share their ideas and not feel like judged and feel like um, they could, you know, um, be heard and listened to. So I felt like when we going into a lot of the group assignments, which we had quite a few group assignments, but I think that's good because it prepares you for, when you're working in a design team afterwards. Um, yeah, it, a big thing is I think delegating tasks and knowing um, everyone knowing their bit to do and um, you know, people like putting their hand up for specific parts of the assignment and everyone having their own little bit and then coming together to put it all together. Like that's a big part of the group um, effort I think is delegating um, and knowing everyone's kind of tasks and mm. things that they need to do in the team and like playing to people's strengths as well like if you know that someone's better at this thing then they should you know you should let go of that and give that to that person mm. but if you know you're better at something else you should like put your hand up for for that side of it um that's a big thing yeah so that's what prepares you for a career in future isn't it you yeah. know people's strengths you work as part of a team and Clarity and communication, that's the hallmark of mm. team projects. Um, Jen, I have always maintained that you do not learn everything within the four walls of a classroom. Mm -hmm. So the external initiatives, you know, the excursions, the placements, the, you, I, if I remember correctly, you did a semester with another university, am I, if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. uh, and the awards, I mean, you You've won so many awards, national, international. You've done runway shows. So it's not just about learning from your teacher in the classroom. So what are the external initiatives that shaped you, shaped your profile as a fashion designer that you are today? Um, yeah, so I, when I was coming into the course, um, I knew there was one thing that I 100% always wanted to do, which was the study abroad program mm -hmm. I was always like certain that I had to do that that was one of the biggest things um, I just really wanted to study fashion design in 
in one of the fashion capitals. So like I, at the stage, I didn't mind um, like, but I had like my top list, which is like Japan, Paris, um, Italy, um, yeah, like Milan or um, London. So in second year, we had that opportunity to, um, at the Academy of Design, to apply with our like partnering colleges around the world. So um, I ended up getting into Paris College of Art, which was um, such an amazing opportunity. And honestly, that one semester <laughs> really, really like shaped so much of my um, learning and of my perception of like the fashion industry, especially like the international fashion industry and meeting all these um, students who are studying fashion in other countries and all coming to, because uh, Paris College of Art had a lot of international students because they were an American college, but in Paris, there was a lot of American students and like students from all different parts, not just France. So that was really, really um, massive eye opener. And I recommend that highly to anyone um, studying, not even just fashion, any course, like doing an international um, study abroad program, it just really opens your eyes to the world and what's out there. Um, yeah, uh, what else? There were a few of uh, placement programs as well, which we did here. Um, so in second year, if you didn't go on the study abroad program, you had you were um, had to do a placement. That was right, wasn't it? In um, yeah, yes, absolutely. In, yeah. So because I didn't do that placement because I did go on study abroad, I decided in third year to to do a placement just like on my own time outside. Um, so I did it at um, Target, which was also where um, Beck was doing hers at one of my friends and she yeah. helped me get into that. And that was a um, really good kind of industry experience to see more the commercial side of things. I did end up doing a studio um, placement in when I was in Paris as well, um, which was during Paris Fashion Week um, because all of the designers have their showrooms. Yeah. Um, and set up their showroom. So we did a showroom placement, which was really um, cool as well to see. Um, you kind of see how all the designers sell their collections. It's like the behind the scenes that you don't really know it exists until you are exposed yeah. to it. So you see the big fashion weeks and everything. Um, but obviously when these big fashion weeks are happening, all these designers are setting up showrooms in that city and presenting their collections to buyers from around the world. So like the, the biggest department stores and boutiques and things like that. So that was really, really interesting because I got to see, like I never knew that. I didn't know that that was what happened. Um, but obviously like that's how the designers sell their collections. It's not just one big like um, projection, like, you know, Obviously, it is an amazing, like, um, show and everything, but behind the scenes, they're presenting on a kind of more business commercial level their collection to buyers, and buyers are buying them, like, during the Fashion Week as well, which that was really awesome to get to know that whole side of things as well. Mm. Tell us about your Shanghai, your China experience. I remember you, you got an award, didn't you? You were sponsored to visit China, and yeah. Yeah, that was a really good, that was thanks to you. <laughs> you, um, so I, I actually didn't know that that there was a competition, um, was the ceremonial, uh, was it uh, international, um, Chinese couture, ceremonial couture design competition, Chinese international ceremonial couture design competition. <laughs> I think they have it every year. Um, and it was my first or second year out of, uni so i think it was the first year out of um i had finished my course and um you found that competition you shared that with me and i thought you know i might as well apply and see how i go so um just you were to design based on a theme and the theme was silk road um so you we had to design a man man's outfit a woman's outfit and a child's outfit all like on the same theme 
And then it was just the sketches and um, the initial design at first, which you apply with. And then if you get chosen um, to uh, shortlisted, um, you were able to create your designs, like actually um, make the pieces and travel to China and they sponsor you to travel to China and um, show your collection and uh, to, on a runway. There was like a fashion week going on at the time and we had one of the runways, which was uh, really cool. So yeah, I sent my designs off and then I got shortlisted um, like in the top 20. I think there was 10 international um, shortlisted students and 10 Chinese, um, Chinese students who were shortlisted. So altogether 20 and that was really awesome. So went to China, um, well obviously made all the garments, which is really cool. Went to China and had that runway experience, which was um, amazing because it's just another experience of seeing my designs on a massive sort of runway and that was really cool. Wonderful. Um, yeah. So uh, we've been talking for a while. Now two questions very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, the first one is uh, after you graduated, I know you graduated with flying colors. You were an A grade student. Um, so did you do any internships or did you apprentice with a fashion house before you launched your label? And how did your label happen? And I know you're working on, um, you've reboot, rebooted, reinvented given the COVID scenario and you are doing very well. So uh, yeah, just some insight into what did you do after you graduated and what are you doing now? Yeah. Um, yeah, so essentially I graduated um, graduated, and then I was, so during my entire course, I was always working in, in retail, which I made a point of because, um, and anyone, if you're, if you're studying and you have to have like obviously a casual job or something on the side to help you, definitely go for a retail job um, with a company, if you can, that is, reflecting the type of company that you want to work for or you want to create because it gives you such a big insight into your customer like i have so much knowledge of my what my customer would be like purely from the, the retail experience um yes yeah, so i had that was i think that's a big kind of um part of it which which is important to know and I did do the placements, so the one overseas, and then I did the one with Target. I wish I did more, honestly. That's a big thing I would recommend. Do as many internships as you can. <laughs> um, internships and placements, um, even if you have like zero experience, even if you haven't even started your design course yet, you could do like an entry level, you know, just getting coffee or whatever, as long as you're there and you're like exposed to everything. Um, so I did the, the one with Target, which is good. I also did one briefly with um, Louis Hon, who's a, a Melbourne designer. Yep. So that was a really, um, really interesting experience as well. And um, then I uh, was applying for different roles um, after I graduated, obviously, and I got a role as a junior assistant designer with um, Finders Keepers, the label, yep. which is in, um, they're based in Adelaide. Um, the, uh, yeah, so Australian Fashion Labels is the kind of umbrella company, and then they have all these other labels under them, which is like Cameo, Collective, Finders Keepers, the label, Jagger, um, Footwear, and like Keepsake, the label, and the fifth. Yeah, so I was working in Finders Keepers, the label, um, and that was a massive sort of learning for me, obviously my first design job after um, uni. So that was really good. I was there for about a year, but I always knew that I wanted to start my own thing. So I always had in my mind that I was going to start my own label. And um, I, at, the more I was at that job, the more I felt like, um, this is great. Like I'm learning so many things and I'm learning how a kind of company runs and how um, a fashion brand does things, um, which was awesome. But I felt like, okay, I, 
I know I'm going to do this eventually. So why don't I just do it now? <laughs> and even though I'm going to start from the bottom, but I can like work, still work um, on the side and try and build my own brand. So it, it will take a lot of time probably and will be a lot of hard work, but I thought I'm doing all this hard work for this company anyways. So why not do that for my own company, like for myself? Um, obviously I'm not going to be getting paid as much, but it's um, something that I was like uh, willing to sacrifice because I knew that that was always going to be my end goal and my dream anyways. So um, I decided to just take that leap. And I, so I was living in Adelaide at the time working uh, with that company. So I just um, decided to move back to Melbourne and start Genev, which I had been planning in my head ever since, you know, final year uni when we had to create our uh, brands anyway. Um, yeah, so I started Genev and um, yeah, so Genev is, as I was saying earlier, it's all about um, empowering the woman and um, unleashing that uh, fierce, confident self that we all have within and we just um, express ourselves through our clothing. Um, I've always felt so strongly about how, how clothes make you feel. So like how presenting yourself um, completely changes your mentality and um, has such a good impact on your um, well-being and how you feel inside and how it projects to other people. And at the same time, what you choose to kind of show yourself as. So like you can kind of play different characters, if you, if you will, just by um, changing your clothes and um, how you portray yourself, um, which is such a powerful tool. And I've always felt so um, connected with that idea. Um, yeah, so and creating, it's not just about creating amazing pieces. It's also um, a big Thing that I'm passionate about is creating unique things like something that is hasn't been done before like in the fashion industry which is something I learned as I was doing um, jobs and internships and placements uh, that a lot of things are replicated which is um, <laughs> something that really disheartens me because it takes it takes away that whole creativity side um, that whole side of innovation and making something new that's that's never been done before. Yeah. Um, so that's another massive thing that I wanted Genev to be is uh, a brand that is innovative and it's new and like the pieces are created from an idea, you know, of um, like a, a, an idea or a sketch. It's not taken from something someone else has done. Um, yeah. So, and, yeah, and catered also to my customers. So what my customer wants. And as you were saying with um, everything that's happened now, so I had uh, all these plans this year to have like a big launch party and have um, a little runway with like all my designs and everything. But obviously when COVID hit, we had to find a way to kind of rework um, everything and adapt to but which that was when uh, that question, which I mentioned earlier, that's like the biggest, um, you know, it just kept coming into my head. It's like, it really does influence fashion, the, the cultural, mm. you know, economic, social, political climate. Um, and you really see that this year with COVID and everything happening, it is really influencing like what people are buying and what people are wearing and, um, you know, for example, uh, the face masks, mm -hmm. obviously everyone needs a face mask now. Mm -hmm. And we decided, like I decided to release some face masks that looked good and made you feel a little bit better because any, you know, there's the classic face masks, which are fine and they do their job. But um, if we have to wear a face mask, why not still have that face mask re reflect our personality and how we want to feel? Um, which is why I decided to release like my own face masks, which, you know, uh, help people still feel happy and confident in what they're wearing. Um, during, even during these times, which, um, are unfortunate, but I mean, we can still try and make, make 
the best out of a bad situation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. You're, you're such an inspiration, you know, Jennifer, to all these youngsters out there, not only youngsters, they have had many brilliant, uh, not so young students also, and they are very accomplished, doing very well right now. So listening to you firsthand and learning from your experience will be such an eye opener for all of these people who are planning to, um, you know, uh, come on board, like we take fashion as a, as a career. So when we talk to ex-students like yourselves and actual designers and entrepreneurs, we realize it's, it's, it's not just glamour and glitz, you know, it's a lot of hard work. Like when we, you were talking about Paris, a tremendous hard work goes into what we see on the runways or what we see in those showrooms. So it's very 24 seven, it's very competitive and uh, you can work through the nights, through the weekends. So if you are um, joining fashion, so be prepared for all of that as Jen and myself, we can tell you. But Jennifer, it's been wonderful having you and talking to you. It's uh, Always very refreshing to, uh, I learn from you, you know, even oh. though, you know, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a role reversal right now. But uh, I, and uh, on behalf of my members of Diderati, the Dida Mail Club, we wish you the very best. And I know, and I'm pretty confident that you'd go only from strength to strength. And thanks for joining us today. I know you're very busy making, you know, the face masks and the beautiful face masks actually and everything else. So good luck, Jen, with all your entrepreneurial ventures. And if need be, uh, I might get some questions. And if you find time, just, just uh, try and resolve a few problems and answer a few questions here. So good luck and bye for now. And till next time, till we, you know, catch up again uh, on Zoom or hopefully physically also okay bye for now jennifer thank you thank so much you. thank you yeah. for having me it's a, it's bye. our pleasure yeah